So my camera's off, but I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully now you'll be able to actually see the uh, paper that's on my desk because I'm not trying to share the spectra. And I did record, so if you were having trouble connecting, um, I'll post it at some point. So more about degree of unsaturation. What if there are elements in there besides carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen? Like nitrogen or halogens. Halogens replace a hydrogen when you introduce a halogen into the molecule. So if you were to make a molecule like this where there's a bromine on that carbon right what would be the name of this molecule? We start numbering on this end because that's where the double bond starts. So, I think it's butene, or does it need one in front of it? It does. Because the alkene could be here, right? It's, pos oh, okay. it's, it's possible to have three bromo, two butene, if the double bond were between carbon two and three instead. Or it could be here, in which case it would be two bromo, one butene. So we've got to say where the alkene starts. So 3-bromo-1-butene has the formula C4H7Br, right? Saturated, C4 should be H10, but 10 minus 7 is not a number that divides by 2. But you'll notice that when I put a bromine in there, the bromine basically takes the place of where a hydrogen would be. So we have to add the number of halogens when counting the number of hydrogens in that are actually present. Add one for each halogen. So we're not going to treat this as C4H7, we're going to treat this as C4H8. And now when we subtract 10H saturated minus 8H present, we're going to get two hydrogens missing, and that tells us one degree of unsaturation, and there it is, right, that's the pi bond, that's the degree of unsaturation. Right. So we have to add one for each halogen when we're counting. What about nitrogen? Let's look at diisopropylamine. So that's an NH group that's attached to a pair of isopropyls. And diisopropylamine is the conjugate acid of the diisopropylamide ion that's part of LDA. So the formula for diisopropylamine is C6H15N. Hopefully, if I counted those right. If it were saturated, how many hydrogens should be present for C6? 14. Should be C6H14. There are 15. It's not possible to be more than saturated. There's no way you can be more than saturated. But notice that if I take a molecule like an ethyl group 
right? If I take that one hydrogen and I replace it with nitrogen, I insert the nitrogen between the carbon hydrogen bond, but I actually add an extra hydrogen because nitrogen has that valence of three, right? Versus oxygen, when I insert an oxygen in between the carbon and the hydrogen, I don't change the number of hydrogens in the molecule because oxygen has a valence of just the two. Right? So when I add an oxygen, it's hydrogen neutral. But when I add a nitrogen, I've actually added one hydrogen that shouldn't be there or wouldn't have been there had I not added the nitrogen. So we need to subtract 1H from the number present for each nitrogen. or phosphorus for that matter, if you've got a phosphorus because phosphorus is right below the uh, nitrogen. So we're not going to treat this as C6H15N. When we take that nitrogen, it's going to take a hydrogen with it. We're going to treat this as C6H14. And then we're going to take the 14 that it has from the 14 for saturated. And that's going to be zero, so there's zero degrees of unsaturation. And diespropylamine is actually a saturated compound. So there's a formula that you can derive from that when you're counting the number of hydrogens, right? You count all of the hydrogens plus all of the halogens and then subtract the number of nitrogens. Oxygen and sulfur, because sulfur is right below oxygen, have no effect on the degree of unsaturation. If you have an even number of nitrogens, right, if you've got two nitrogens, then you're going to subtract two hydrogens. So degree of unsaturation is a powerful tool that can be used to help you determine um, what you're looking at, what the, what, what the parameters of the molecule are, kind of how many degrees of unsaturation. It's always the first thing you should do, because there's no point looking at the fragments and coming up with a uh, structure that has a degree of unsaturation if you're going to find out that there is no unsaturation.